Hi, welcome to Library Life. I'm Amanda Jackson, Director of the Chesapeake Public Library, and with me today is Angela Gaskins, Manager of the South Norfolk Memorial Library. Welcome. Thank you. So we're here to talk about Black History Month, and we've got some incredible programs right now. There's a lot going on. There's a lot. Um, starting at the branch level, going system-wide. There are crafts, there's storytelling, there's a lot. And we actually have some really impressive folks coming to visit us on site. We do. Um, some of the adult and family programs that they're having involve Ken Wright, who's a local artist. He's going to be doing a presentation on the Buffalo Soldiers. And I've seen his exhibit in the past, and it was wonderful. Um, people are going to love the drawings and the um, paintings that he has, as, as well as some sculptures. Um, we've got, um, and that's going to be at um, Major Hilliard Library. Mm -hmm. um, events start on the 11th of February and go through the 28th. Um, Sharon Taylor is going to be giving a poetic history of music. So, oh, wow. yeah, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be two hours. And I've seen her do that before, um, but not for the two hours. So it's going to be more detailed, but it's very interesting. She weaves a lot of humor into it. So I think people are going to like that a lot. We're also going to have at the South Norfolk branch, which I manage, the Buffalo Soldiers coming to talk about the Cuffey Town 13. And they were a, um, 13 individuals who lived in Cuffey Town, which is part of Chesapeake, um, during the Civil War. And they were in the 5th, the 10th, and the 36th Regiment. And um, they are buried in Cuffey Town. The Buffalo Soldiers Motorcycle Club went and put a placard on their gravesite because there was none there. And they maintain it and keep flags up and everything. So they're gonna tell us the history about how that came about. They're also gonna tell us about the motorcycle club. So if you're interested in being part of a motorcycle club that's local, that has national ties, they're the ones to join. They're also gonna have um, Mar Dr. Martha Williams, I think, is gonna be at the Major Hilliard Library to talk about the botanical gardens in Norfolk and how that developed. And we're also going to have some storytelling, and it's going to be rounded out on the 28th by a musical performance. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, parents can bring children to the library weekly to pick up a craft that's associated with Black History Month. And there's also going to be storytelling each week. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. And that's what I love, it's like it's all over. So yeah. no matter which library is your home library, there's something going on at it. Yes. So I know that Ken Wright, we've had on the show before. He's done some exhibits at the Cuffey Library. Right. About all, he's a phenomenal artist. But he's talking about the Buffalo Soldiers, which I had never heard of before. I listened to his presentation. It's the Soldiers. It's the first black regiment that started in the Civil War. And they continued all the way through, I think, like the Vietnam War. Right. And um, I thought it was interesting to find out. I, I want to know why they call them Buffalo Soldiers. So I, I did some research, you know, librarian research. So <laughs> I found out that... In the Civil War, um, there was a time when they went to fight on the Plains, and the Plains Indians would see them coming, and they'd um, say that they looked like the buffalo because they had dark, curly hair, and they were fierce fighters. Interesting. So, yeah. I was like, oh, that's different. I didn't know that. Sorry to admit it, but I didn't know it. Sorry. <laughs> but now that I know, it's something that it, um, it's an interesting thing that people will say, hmm, didn't know that. Let me find out more. And that's what I'm hoping they'll come out to listen to the stories that they have to tell. That's what I also like about the Cuffey Town. So many people don't realize that there's so much rich history here in Chesapeake. Exactly. And it's kind of gotten lost, so it's a great way to remind both our adults but also our kids that history happens right here in Chesapeake. Right, and that's what I, uh, I'm appreciative of. And I didn't realize the history of it until I went searching on the tourism site and found that information, and I said, well, Let's see if there are actually some Buffalo soldiers here that we could talk to. And lo and behold, they do exist here. So hopefully it'll open some people's eyes to what's available in this area. And because a lot of people will go out of town to look for history. But mm -hmm. history is right here at your door. So there's so much rich there? history in Chesapeake. Yeah. I mean, Dismal Swamp, the site of part of the Underground Railroad. There's yes. so much that a lot of people just don't realize. 
And the storytellers are phenomenal, too. I'm really excited about the music. And then I saw that Dylan Pritchett was going to come. Yeah. I'm familiar with him from way back. So he's a phenomenal storyteller. Very, very exciting. And then we also have Kwame Alexander coming, too, right? But virtually. Oh. <laughs> I know. He's coming virtually. So he's going to be talking about his latest book, which... Not to brag, but you were able to make sure that it unveiled itself. It was, you know, it, it, it was released here in Chesapeake at Black Ink last year. Last September, he was here in person, and he came out, and the people responded favorably to his presence. He talked about his new book, and this was the first stop on his uh, tour to publicize that book. And I think it went really well, and people were glad to see that he was back in town. Yeah, he was such a nice guy. It was on my bucket list, so thank you very much for giving me something to mark mm -hmm. off that I've met him, and I felt very impressed with being able to, to say that now I know him. We're like best friends now, I think. He doesn't know we are, but we totally are. In the, yeah. In, in my, in yeah. my head, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. And his father is a huge part of the black history movement in Chesapeake. He was very, Dr. Alexander was very integral to the civil Afro-Union soldiers and making sure they were memorialized here and that there was a, that like like the uh, Buffalo Riders, that we memorialize them and we mark those places that have, could be off, often forgotten. Yes, and I, I do appreciate any bit of history that is there to let people know what we've gone through and what we can accomplish if we put our minds and our energy into doing it. Yeah, I love this because it's such a celebration of history and such a celebration of Chesapeake and black history. So there's uh, so much going on. Where can I get all that information? Because there's no way I'm going to remember it. Oh, there's so much to remember. If you go to the Chesapeake Library website, which is chesapeakelibrary.org, Go to our calendar of events, go to February, and you can see weekly events in there. And I also want to mention that people who t attend the events, read books during the month of February, can um, sign up for our Beanstalk Challenge oh, yeah. and win prizes. So that's something that may get the kids going. Oh, that's a great point. So chesapeakelibrary.org, you can find all of it under our events page. We also, under our online resources, have Beanstack. Hit there, sign up. We constantly have for the different months and the different events we have going on challenges. So we were just talking about before we started that we try to read, but sometimes get it, things get away from us. This is a great way to encourage yourself to read, give yourself goals, and to also learn new things. Yes. I love learning new things. Just to say, I do. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me today, Angela, and sharing all that we have for Black History Month. Thank you for having me. Hopefully you'll join us this month and please check us out on chesapeakelibrary.org. This is Library Life.